Okay, Mrs. Hallie, back at you. We're going to talk about Unit 2 today. All right, so um, in Unit 2, yes, by the way, back so soon, you can't get rid of me. But you got another nine weeks with me. So anyways, um, let's get going with some more science. I mean, you just want more. You just can't get enough. It's just so much fun. Actually, science can be fun because there's a lot of cool little concepts to science, right? Such as what we're going to talk about today because there's some pretty cool formations. This world in general um, is just pretty amazing. And so we're going to talk about some of the scientific processes that go along with that. Which leads me to this lovely question right here. What is geology? Okay, Geology is, you know, I want you guys to kind of think about it because if I had you guys in class while we were talking about this, I'd have you go and try and search for the perfect picture that describes geology. And if you were to go and Google geology and look at the images, you'd be amazed to see how many different things come up for geology. You know, geology is the study of the earth and all the landforms, okay, and, and how those landforms are made. So geology encompasses a lot. And I have to say that we don't have um, a ton of time to go over this, but I could spend, the, there are entire courses devoted to geology. So I'm going to go over just kind of the basics that deal with geology, all right? So prepare yourself. So when we talk about um, geology, a lot of times people think about rocks, rocks, old rocks, ladder rocks, right? Um, fossils even. So geologists typically deal with, you know, kind of rocks, but more specifically what is in the earth and what encompasses it. So I thought it, I thought it was a pretty cool video. Of course, it's set to great music. and. It talks a lot about fossils, but nonetheless, when we talk about fossils in the Earth's rocks, we're talking about geology. So get a load of this, and then we'll get back to some other cool things. Okay, well, hopefully this works. Hold on. Patience. Patience. Here we go. Let's try this again. Stuck in the spot, huh? Each new layer stacking up, so the oldest on the bottom and the newest on top. So how old is your fossil, bro? Well, it was pretty far down, so it's pretty darn old. And I dated this one, so I asked him, though. It's from 3.5 billion years ago. Yo, I got that lava flow, volcano air full of particles and smoke. There goes life, as they know now that's a blast. Most rocks ain't moving that fast. The sediment's evidence like a present telling us of the past. Fossil rocks are in the ground tonight They've been down there for a really long time They contain the history of life They've been down there for a really long time Fossil rocks are in the ground tonight They've been down there for a really long time They are literally on the ground Take your chisel out and Flake that Every day I'm shoveling. Brushing and brushing them. Brush it off. Here the story of life is told through rock. Story of the earth is told through life. Now stop. 
to the trilobite. Continental plates adrifting, mountains in the states uplifting, tend to isolate the species affecting who you mate with. Believe me, slow moves, long time, push up mountains to the sky. Slow moves, long time, open up a great divide. Slow moves, long time, fossils found on my side. Fossils found, they tell us why. Tell the history of life. Slow moves, long time, slow moves, long time, slow moves, long time, slow moves, long time. Things are drifting at your boy. Things are drifting at your boy. Things are drifting at your boy. Now, boom, there's an asteroid. Okay, so I kind of like that song, first of all. You guys remember last block or the block I had you when I first started off? Yeah, that was my song. So um, when you kind of think about everything that that song talked about, that's all geology. So there's a lot that encompasses geology from mountain formations to volcanoes to rocks. Rocks themselves tell a lot of history. So that's why there are geolog geologists that actually just study rocks but then also study different landforms. Okay? So anyways. Many different processes make up our landforms today. All of that includes are included in the geolo geological process uh, that happens. So, oh, the dog's kind of going crazy. Yes, go get it. So volcanoes, let's talk about volcanoes. Pretty cool. Um, I've seen an active volcano in Hawaii. It's pretty amazing. But you have magma. So basically, something that is heated up deep within the earth. Okay, and pressure starts to build because when you think about the Earth's core, it's an incredible temperature. Okay, so everything is this molten, molten kind of substance. Okay, all the rock that is there that is, um, you know, at extreme heat is all liquid. Okay, in the form of magma. Um, I should say it's more like a plasma type thing. But basically, sometimes you'll have these openings in the crust, and it allows magma to flow, flow, flow upward. Okay, allows magma to flow upward towards the Earth's surface, where it erupts as lava. Okay, as it cools down, lava can form a mountain, which is kind of cool. So it deposits layer after layer and then forms this mountain that gets higher and higher. Um, so basically, a mountain formed in this manner is called a volcano. So sometimes they build really, you know, huge, and you guys will see in your lesson, it shows um, kind of a before and after of Mount St. Helens after one of the huge eruptions. Because sometimes when all of that pressure builds up, and it erupts hugely, it can blow some of that mountain apart, okay? So there's a lot of force and a lot of power. So anyways, there's volcanoes, which I think are amazing. There are still many active volcanoes today, um, even on Hawaii. So you have to read about in your lesson and your unit how the Hawaiian Islands were formed, because I thought that was, you know, that's a really kind of a cool thing to know, especially those of you guys who visited Hawaii, okay? All right, so those eruptions. So gases are created deep within that earth, okay? that gas pressure starts to build up and it needs somewhere to escape because as it builds up it's building all this pressure and it's like ah okay so it's going to force the magma to the surface and the magma is going to erupt okay so obviously just a lovely picture of an eruption kind of crazy like can you imagine being kind of in the same vicinity as this i mean that's crazy okay so again it forms some pretty cool land features here's mount st helens um, this is a place that I've actually seen. It's called Crater Lake. That basically, um, you know, you had this huge volcanic eruption a long, 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 long time ago. And it leaves this huge kind of a hole because of this huge eruption. And um, basically over time, it fills up with water. And it's actually like this crystal clear blue water. It's so beautiful. Just kind of in the middle of nowhere. So it's pretty crazy. Devil's Tower, which was um, a volcano that basically would kind of, um, what's the term I'm looking for? It would erupt, but it would not erupt fully, and so then it kind of, I, I want to say fossilized, but it's kind of a petrified, um, but it's rock, but it's it was at, at, time, at one time kind of a volcano um, that never really amounted to um, eruption, so it was a very interesting kind of a land formation but started off as a volcano with that pressure in the magma. So moving on to earthquakes. So again, remember, now these are all, some of these can be considered natural disasters, but they're all geological processes. Earthquakes are caused by the movement of the Earth's crust. So we have, we have all these plates. We call that plate tectonics. So plates kind of butt up against each other, but sometimes they move, and they'll form this, um, you know, kind of a, obviously, this 
crazy, you know, eruption of, of plates that causes these earthquakes, okay, kind of sends this wave of motion outward, okay, and obviously where it starts is called the epicenter. So they often occur at faults, okay, so faults are basically fractures in the earth crust, okay, and the earth crust is divided into several distinct pieces called plates, like I had mentioned, okay, they have the ability to slightly move against each other. So also, you know, you can have them that happen under land, but also you can have um, earthquakes that happen underwater, which are going to cause these huge tsunamis, you know, tsunamis that basically, you know, destroy anything that's in its path as far as land right next to the ocean because it creates these huge, huge waves, okay? So they can be very obviously devastating um, and damaging, but again, it's all shifting of those Earth's plates, okay? And then mountain formation. I mean, think about where we live. We live in Colorado. We live right against the Rocky Mountains. So I found a cool picture about how the Rocky Mountains were actually formed. So it's pretty cool when you think about that, okay? Um, you know, and basically, again, it has to do with the movement of these plates that sometimes they'll start to move up and they'll start to push that material upward and form these mountains, okay? So movement of those plates, again, on um, in different ways, okay? So sometimes they go slide underneath, sometimes they kind of go up together like that, and that forms different types of mountains, okay? So I'm not going to read any of this to you guys right now, but if you want, I mean, this is kind of a, a cool thing because it's very particular to us. It's showing even how the hogback um, was formed. The hogback is that very first line of kind of small foothills right against the Rockies, okay? I live right there, so it's that's kind of cool to me to know how that was formed. But read through this, pause right now, take some time to kind of read through this, because it's kind of cool to see what's happening in, in basically how it went from, you know, flat to what we have now, you know, which is kind of cool, okay? So mountain formations, movement of plates, button up against each other, causing, you know, everything to move upward. Okay, and so there's lots of types of weathering. Weathering causes many really cool landforms. I mean, think about the Grand Canyon. If any of you guys have been into Utah, where the... Um, Arches National Park is, oh, it's amazing. Um, this is one of the most famous arches there. But basically, weathering is the process that breaks down solid earth materials into smaller pieces and typically changes them chemically, okay? Because of weathering, that could be because of wind, um, it could be because of rain, it could be because of different chemicals that are, um, you know, in the rain or whatever, it's going to cause these different breaking down of substances. So mechanical weathering involves breaking down of rocks into smaller and smaller pieces by wind, water, or ice. So no chemicals involved. The just the natural forces that are in you know our our world basically. But chemical weathering breaks down rocks by changing their chemical composition. So think about mechanical weathering is just breaking it into smaller pieces, but it's still the same rock. But you can have chemical weathering due to forest fires, due to kind of acidic rain that actually change the chemical composition of a rock. So just like when you, when we, I think we've learned about this um, a while back, you have chemical change, you have mechanical change, or should I say physical change is what we call it. Physical change is you're not changing the chemical properties. You, you can break something smaller and that's a physical change. But a chemical change, you're actually changing that chemical composition into something totally new. So those are the two different types of weathering, but those are, on a whole, those, all the things that we just talked about are basically the, the geological forces, the major ones that you're going to see. Lots of things are caused by, um, you know, volcanoes. You'll have landslides, you'll have different things, but um, ultimately I wanted to touch on the major sources of geological processes. So, there you have it. Make sure you guys still read, 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 and take notes of your unit, but that gives you guys a little bit of background, and some of you guys probably already know that, but that's a little start for you. So we'll see you next time for the next unit.